In today's video, I want to take a look at the pthread mutex trilog function and what it actually does and what is different between it and the lock function and the one that we used previously. To do that, I'm going to have to first create uh, at least, let's say, four threads and I just want to see the behavior of pthread mutex lock first. So I'm just going to create a very simple program that does exactly that. And here inside the routine, what I want to do is simply uh, lock a single mutex by all the four threads that we have created and, and print a message and see what happens. So I'm going to create here. All right, and then simply just call pthread mutex lock on our mutex. And of course also call unlock after we are done and in between we're just going to print a simple message that we got the lock. And after we got the lock, let's say it does something that is quite uh, time consuming. So I'm going to just simply call a sleep here instead of actually executing something that's time consuming. Suppose that's something there. And if I try to run this, think about what's going to happen and what's going to show on the terminal. Well, Simply because we have four threads doesn't mean that we're not going to get four got lock messages. Right? You just get that we're going to get them in succession of one, one second, one after the other, because what's going to happen? Well, all four threads are going to start executing, right? The same exact function, but only one of them we're going to, are going to be able to lock that mutex, right? The rest are going to have to wait. Okay. And then only after that single thread that I got the lock, unlock that uh, mutex, then another thread can continue and so on and so forth. And that's what's basically happening here. All right, then what's so different about try lock? Well, if I change this to a try lock instead of lock, well, this is a bit more tricky because with try lock, you are trying to lock uh, the mutex. It's not guaranteed that you got it, but uh, if you did, that's great. But if you didn't, you shouldn't be executing uh, the code in the critical section. Therefore, you should check the return value of uh, try lock always. So the return value of try lock is zero if you got the lock or is something else if you didn't. It's actually e busy if, it, if you didn't get the lock. So we can say here if try lock equals zero, then we can execute this printf, this sleep, and of course, if we got the lock, we should also unlock it. So that unlock call still applies. That's exactly the same. Okay, and let's say on else, we can say that, uh, well, if it's not zero, that means it's uh, the constant e busy, which I think it's actually in rno.h here, if I type in ebz, yeah, it's 16. So that's what we got. Uh, we get if we, if our try lock function tries to lock the mutex, but it's already locked. Okay. And I can just print out another message saying that uh, didn't get lock. Okay, that's it. Now, if I try to launch this, think about what's going to happen. In this case, you might notice that you don't actually get four got lock messages, right? You only get one got lock message of the first thread that got the lock here, but the rest tried to get the lock that failed and the execution continued on the else branch because the result wasn't zero. So it just printed and didn't get the lock. And that's the difference between try lock and lock. Basically, one of them is instant and the other one is going to be waiting. Okay. So lock is going to be always waiting until the mutex is unlocked. But try lock is just going to say, okay, well, uh, are you locked? If, if, if you're not locked, then okay, that's fine. You can lock and uh, execute the code. But if you're locked, 
then that's also fine. I'm just gonna return, I'm not gonna wait, I'm gonna return out of the function with a number that's different than zero here and uh, the programmer knows what to do from there, right? Like I did here. And that's really all there is to it. It's very, I think it's a very simple concept to grasp. Uh, in a future video, we're gonna take a look at uh, certain examples that make use of this try lock function because it's it's very interesting and has some uh, nice uses. Uh, although the examples are quite quite a bit more complex than the usual, it's uh, it's probably gonna be fine. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. If you do have any questions, leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Of course, the source code is gonna be found on our website. Link down in the description below. Take care.